Okay, yeah, okay, it's it's recording now. Yeah, there we go. So let me just get started. So just to briefly introduce myself, uh, my name is Laura, and uh, welcome to Build Your Own Marketing API with Python. Today we're going to be talking about validators and uh, databases. And if you have anything uh, to say, if you have any notes, it's completely fine to leave a note in the chat and I will have a look once we're done. So just to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be doing today, I will introduce the concepts that we're going to be talking about first, and then we will have a live demo, and afterwards there will be a chat. However, I will stop recording at that point. And uh, just to introduce myself briefly, um, that's an accurate uh, picture of me last night. So my name is Laura, and I'm based in Seoul in Korea. And I would consider myself more of a tech adjacent person. I'm a beginner myself. I currently work in marketing for a webtoon company, which is kind of like, like Netflix for online mm -hmm. comics, if you will. And what I hope to achieve with this series is to uh, reverse engineer what I use on the daily, which is um, marketing APIs, and hopefully help you build your own marketing API or sort of learn, have a, have a takeaway as well. And just to go over what an API actually is. So um, it is a virtual middleman transferring data from one interface, such as a mobile app to another. Um, that is how Turing.com defines it. There are everyday examples um, such as PayPal. And um, in a marketing um, context, you have Google Ads, you have um, Snapchat APIs such as conversion APIs, publisher APIs, you have meta ads uh, or Facebook ads as they used to be known. There are Google Analytics. And uh, yeah, just to talk about what we're looking at uh, in a minute. So as for validators, so validators um, are used to um, uh, check data, especially in forms. And for that, we can use WT forms. I felt a bit rude you know, looking at it, saying it, and I had to look up why it was called like that. And apparently um, the person who created WT forms um, wanted to make it sound like what the forms. <laughs> I don't know. It made me blush a little bit, but okay. Um, so you um, so <laughs> use forms for uh, form validation. And then when you declare your classes, uh, you can add a validator. And the really interesting thing is um, WT Forms has uh, built in and also custom validators that you can write yourself. And um, what you do then is you validate the class within your decorator. And uh, I'm just going to pop the documentation for WT Forms in the chat. Just give me a sec. There we go. So that has um, more information on um, yeah, what, what kind of built-in validators there are and how to write a custom validator as well, how to use regular expressions. It's, it's quite interesting, but is a little bit beyond the scope of today's um, meetup. So I'll let you have a look in your own time. And uh, yeah, just to give you a quick overview. So um, when you import your uh, forms, so you have WT forms and you um, import your validators, and then when you define your classes, uh, let me just, okay, yeah, that's better maybe. Yeah, that's better. When you have your classes, you add, um, where you have your fields, you add validators data required. And that's just sort of the default uh, validator that says that you have to have some kind of data. In my case, I want to have fields for email and for passwords. And um, well, obviously, if you want to log in to a website, you have to have these two bits. They're not optional. So which is why I have them as data required. And then, um, then you have your decorator. And if you have a little look here, so you create an instance of your, um, of your form. And then uh, whenever you have a submission, so here you have your post method, whenever you have your submission, um, if it's uh, validated, if there is data, then these things happen basically, okay? And then the next thing we're looking at is SQLite, um, which is an embedded database. And again, because I'm quite a beginner myself, I need something really simple that I can practice with. And what's 
interesting about SQLite is it comes as a little file. You don't need any service. It's basically like, I don't know, like a Word document file or whatever. You just kind of, you can send it, you can share it. It's, it's quite straightforward, does what it says on the tin uh, type of thing. Um, uh, what you do once you have downloaded and installed SQLite is you add it to your path variables. You um, then download and install DB Browser, which is a kind of like a, like a visual interface for your database. And then you also need to um, import and configure SQL Alchemy in your API, just to give you an overview of that as well. So, hmm. Um, you install SQLite. In my case, um, I'm using Windows um, because, uh, like I mentioned in a previous uh, meetup, I have kind of wrecked my Linux. I uh, need to get on that at some point. Let me just send you the SQLite um, download link as well in the um, chat, like so. So I have uh, the 64-bit version, sorry, 32-bit. Mm, and then what you do is you extract it you unzip it, and then uh, what Windows does is it tries to prevent you from opening that file because it says, oh, this file um, could harm your computer. But then what you can do is you can be a total punk, like so, and you double click and you say you want to run it anyway. And then at this point, it should say something like that. And it should mean that you have SQL on your computer to some success. And then you need to add it to your path variable. So you go to your um, control panel and you edit your environment variables, like, like so. You add it to your path and you say you want to create a, um, a new entry. And then what you can do is um, where you have your download, you copy that address and you add it uh, to your variables. You say new, and, so, and then you literally just copy paste it, and that is your beautiful environment. And what you can then try and check just to make sure that it really works um, on any location on your computer, not just the download folder. What you can do is, um, if let's say you're in your project folder where you have your app, and if you run SQLite three, it should look like that, and that should tell you in your terminal, okay, it it is installed now. Um, the next thing you can do is you download DB Browser for SQLite. This link, hold on. I think I did, oh my, okay, yeah, yeah, there we go. That's the link, and let me just pop that in the browser as well. Sorry. Okay, and then again, you install your version. Um, in my case, I picked the standard installer um, for 64-bit. I think if you're a bit more advanced, you can do it with no installer, you can sort of customize it and download it yourself. I'm not that advanced myself. And then you, again, you um, say so you want to create a new database. Ooh. You want to create a new database. And in my case, I'm calling it emails and passwords because that's what I want to store in my database. And uh, uh, also one interesting thing is in order for, um, for your database to save, you need to write changes. Okay? And so you say new database, and you can give it a name. In my, in my case, again, I called it emails and passwords. And it gives you all these options down here. And then um, you can tick. And depending on what you tick, it creates your database table for you. So uh, for example, here we have NN, which means not null. Um, so it cannot be null. So there has to be some data in it. It's not an optional field. PK is um, is it is it a primary key? So can it be can it be? Yeah, primary key. I was. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. No, no, no. Just continue. <laughs> <laughs> just continue. Um, so you have your primary key, which is your identifier for that record, and in my case. Um, uh, yeah, so in my case, I said that the primary key is the, um, I think I changed it a little bit later. I think I changed it to ID after, afterwards. After, afterwards. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's, be that, that's uh, yeah. best practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's best. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's let's have a look at a bit. I, I did change, I think, after I made the presentation. Yeah, so I, um, there was an ID as my primary key, which is a sort of um, uh, identifier, and then um, it can be text, so it can can be like a string. The email uh, should be unique, um, but the password doesn't have to be unique in case people, for some reason, choose the same password. Um, and then let's have a look. Yeah, so it's, it's really interesting. You can actually um, add entries and then you can already directly add data to your um, database up here in the visual interface. Okay, so you have all that and then you've got SQL Alchemy in your app. You configure it um, and then at that point I had a really weird bug and I haven't really seen that in any of the documentation. So I, I thought maybe I should just share in case you experience that as well. So in my case, I had an import error where it said you cannot import um, the name event type open from watchdog events. I was like, oh, okay, what's, what's going on? But as it turns out, all you need to do is you just need to install watchdog, um, which is a sort of, I think it's like a little thing that runs in the background and kind of checks what your API, what your, your program is doing. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of it for the, uh, um, a theoretical part. Um, for my sources, I used Codecademy. There are some Flask, Web, and SQL courses. <clears throat> and at this point, I just want to make clear it's not an ad. Um, this is not a paid gig having a chapter. Um, it's just, in my case, I, I felt like I needed it just to kind of have a better overview. Um, I also used Flask documentation. I used um, some of the related libraries like for example you um, wt forms there is a very useful um, video on free code camp for building your own api with python uh, it's a little bit different from mine because they use fast api and they um, build a social media app which is not really what i'm doing but if that's something that you're looking at maybe that could be a very uh, interesting bit and um, just to uh, get into the demo bit for a second. Let me just share my screen for that one as well. Where are we? Okay, let's go over here. Okay, so um, we've got uh, ta -ta -ta. we've got um, our libraries up here. We've got um, the configurations. Uh, we've got the database up here. We've got a little um, model and like uh, Chico was saying earlier, um, uh, it is apparently best practice to have an ID, which is your primary key. And then you have your email and your password. Um, then again, you have your uh, forms, you have your validators, and then later a little bit uh, down there, you also have your validation on the bottom. And just to maybe have a little look at um, DB browser as well. Let me just share that as well. So oh, just a sec. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our DB browser over here, <clears throat> and I just want to open something. Let's say I'm up here. <clears throat> And I'm up here and I've got my API here. Doo -doo -doo. And then um, down here, I've got my emails and passwords database, which is on the same level as my app. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a really like a little um, practice database. Like, sorry, so I just created some um, yeah test roles that I need to update, as Chico said, with uh, the ID as my primary key. And uh, yeah, that is that is it for me for the time being. I'm just going to stop recording and uh, we can have a little chat and then maybe Chico can correct me further. Just one second. And I'm going to stop recording in three, two and one.